Hey, all right, it's another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jelen from Mr. Excel. We'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is episode 75, Dynamic Validation with Offset or Index. Hey, now last week uh, we had the same problem. Can there be dynamic ranges for VLOOKUP and data validation? Uh, and Mike and I both used a table. If you remember, we weren't feeling well last week. Uh, offset makes my head hurt, and so I definitely wasn't, wasn't up for it. Can we? Uh, have this data validation use the offset function. This is pretty wild. You know that the data validation dialog uh, will actually uh, accept the offset function, so you don't have to necessarily have it, uh, you know, out on another screen. Let's uh, build this here. So we start out equal offset. Offset has five arguments. The first argument is where do we start from? The top left hand corner. And so I'll choose that cell there. Notice they already put the dollar signs in. That's great. Uh, how many rows down from there do we want to go? For the starting point, zero. How many columns over from there do we want to go? Zero. How many rows tall? How many rows tall? Okay, well, uh, I want this to grow. And so as we add more products, I want to come up with uh, the complete list. So I'm going to use count A, and I'm just going to choose all of column G. Now, we have to make sure that they don't put anything else in column G, otherwise, you know, we could kind of narrow that down a little bit. How many columns wide? One column wide. All right, so let's uh, do all of that. Click OK. All right, so right now our drop down has product 1, 2, 3. If we come over here and add product 17. Come back to the drop down. Product 17. There we go. It's working beautifully. OK, how about the VLOOKUP? Can the VLOOKUP use that same offset function? So right here, instead of G6 to H28, can we use an offset there? Well, of course we can. That's the easier way to use an offset. Uh, we're always going to start from this particular cell here. So again, press F4. For the starting cell, it is zero rows down, zero columns over. Uh, total number of rows tall, that is the count A of column G. Probably need an F4 right there. And for the number of columns wide, that is always going to be two columns wide. All right, so that offset is going to return an array, uh, which is like putting a, a range in here. We should just press Enter, copy that down, and bam, our VLOOKUP starts to work. We'll put in a price, 49. Yep, good. All right, Mike, that's the offset way. Let's see what you have. Thanks, Mr. Excel. Wow, you're over your sickness? Not me, it's five weeks and I'm still just as sick as I was. So, oh, we get to do Excel, that always makes you feel better. Um, oh, offset, great function here because it's specifically built to create dynamic ranges in essence. However, the offset does have one drawback, it is a volatile function which means it recalculates every time the sheet recalculates. And that means even if there's no product change or no new records added, it'll recalculate. So for big spreadsheets, sometimes this slows the calculating down. So in that case, you can use the index function to create a dynamic range. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my, my formula here and then apply it to the data uh, validation list dialog box. I'm going to use the index function. However, index can only look up, uh, in our case, a single uh, cell reference. And so we start our formula like this. We click on G2 and then type a colon. Now we don't, this, this is cell reference colon cell reference. So get rid of that one and actually we'll F4 this to lock it. Now here's the trick. Index usually looks up a value, but if you put the index function into the context of a cell reference, notice cell reference colon, anything that comes after here, it is expecting a cell reference. So if we put index here, it will look up the cell reference instead of the actual value. Now the array, Mr. Excel highlighted the whole column, the whole column here. I'm just going to assume I know the maximum number of products I will have and highlight a few cells more and lock that. That'll be our lookup array. Remember, we're trying to find cell reference G8. In essence, look up a cell reference. Comma, the row number, I'll use count a uh, and simply highlight that same range F4. Count a uh, will give us three here, which it, the array, whoop, third row, that's exactly what we want. 
All right, so row number, we don't need the column, so I just close parentheses. Now, watch this. If I highlight this index and evaluate it, what do you think it's going to deliver? Well, of course, the cell reference, right? F9 is the evaluate. Uh-uh, no, because it's not in the context of a cell reference yet. It's by itself. We evaluated it by itself. Control Z. But now if we highlight the whole thing and hit F9, boom, it'll give us the range of values. And that's a dynamic range. I'm going to Control Z, and I'm going to enter this. Control Shift Enter. Just test it. I'm going to type in S. Come up here, evaluate F9. Sure enough, we can see it's picking it up. Control Z. Now I'm going to copy this, because I'm going to have to pay, use this for, oops, Control Z, Control C, copy, escape, delete that. Now if you try to come up here and uh, put it in the source dialog box, it won't let you. It doesn't like that colon there, so if you try it, it'll uh, talk about unions and stuff like that. I'm going to click Escape. We have to use defined name, and then put that defined name in the data validation dialog box. The keyboard shortcut for define names or create new name, name manager is control F3. I'm going to delete that in the one. I'm going to click new and then give it some name like D data validation, dynamic data validation lookup, so DDVL. Come down here, control V. Looks like I need an equal sign. All right, so that range right there, I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to test it before I X out of this name manager. Click right there, and sure enough, you see it's working. All right, close. Now I come and highlight this column. Alt D L tab L tab. I actually could have just tab tab there and get got to that. Now I'm going to, oh, wait a second, I forgot my name. Oh, no problem. F3 is paste name. DDL, I double click that, and sure enough, now we have, uh, even though that formula wasn't allowed here, the define name will work just fine. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to test it real quick. So sure enough, it's got a D. Now I'm going to put a value here, 15 bucks or whatever it is, apply some formatting. Maybe I'll just do product 4 like that. All right, so now I got to, oh yeah, so it does does work there. Now we need to, uh, I don't didn't copy this all the way down. Did I not copy this one down? That's what happens when you try to do this when you're six. Oh, we need to find uh, a dynamic range using index, no problem. I'm going to actually copy this and change it. Copy, escape, come right here and paste it. And the only thing we need to do different, because we're not looking up this cell reference, we need to look up this cell reference. Well, first off, I need to highlight from G6 to H6, so I'm going to change that. Now we got the whole table there. And two arguments in index, row and column. So right now it knows to go down to row 4, but now we need to say column 2. Well, it's always 2, so I can comma 2 and actually hard code that in. That'll work right there if we highlight this in F9. Perfect. Control Z. Copy. Control Shift Enter. And then I'm going to come here and highlight that VLOOKUP uh, table array and Control V. I just pasted the index dynamic range there. Enter. I should have Control Enter. Double click and send it down. So we don't have any there. So it looks like it's working just fine. I'll say product uh, 5, 1 buck. Let's see if this will work. Product 5. Man, that is so cool. All right, that's uh, index for dynamic ranges. Throw it back over to Mr. Excel. Mike, that is wild. I never knew that you could use the index in a range name like that. Also, the data validation, validation dialog box and Ohio Governor John Kasich. They both have something in common. Neither one of them likes unions. And uh, also F3 to paste names. There you go. I learned a lot in that uh, episode. Well, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.